Ah, my dear Fright fans, looks like we're about to unlock a tale where love never dies, but certainly gets a bit drafty. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring the bell icon, or you might miss the hauntingly good story of love letters from the grave. In the quaint, history-steeped town of Salem, Massachusetts, Emily Carson, a 32-year-old history teacher with a vibrant spirit, stood before an embodiment of the past. The Victorian house, with its peeling paint and ivy-clad walls, whispered tales of bygone days. Emily, recently heartbroken, saw in this house not just an architectural relic, but a refuge where the echoes of history promised a balm for her wounds. Her days were spent in earnest preparation for her role at Salem High School, crafting history lessons she hoped would ignite a passion in her students. Yet it was the house, this sanctuary, from her emotional turmoil that consumed her evenings. She explored each room with a curiosity that mirrored her professional fervor, finding solace in the creaking floorboards and the rustling leaves against the window panes. One autumn afternoon, a discovery awaited Emily in the attic. Amidst the musty scent of aged wood, her hand brushed against a loose floorboard. Heart racing with excitement and trepidation, she unearthed a hidden compartment containing a trove of letters. Their edges frayed, ink faded but legible. They were addressed to an Abigail dating back to the 1800s. Unfolding the first letter, Emily felt a shiver run down her spine, almost hearing a secret sighing in the silence. These letters unveiled a poignant story of Abigail and Jonathan, a sailor torn between his love and the sea. Emily, each night by the light of an old lamp, found herself drawn into their world, feeling an inexplicable connection to Abigail, who had lived within these same walls. However, as Emily delved deeper, peculiar occurrences began. Shadows danced in her periphery, and occasionally, the faint scent of sea brine filled the rooms. Rational yet unsettled, Emily attributed these anomalies to the house's age, not yet ready to believe in something beyond the physical world. Unbeknownst to her, the house was stirring, its past reaching out, blurring the lines between then and now. Emily, engrossed in the letters, had become the key to secrets held close for over a century. In the following weeks, Emily's life intertwined with the Victorian house's history. It transformed from a mere shelter into a character in Abigail and Jonathan's lost love story. The boundary between her world and the letters began to blur, marked by unexplained shadows, whispers, and sudden chills. One stormy evening, as Emily read in the attic, a gust slammed the window shut, plunging the room into darkness. In that moment, she saw it, a wraith-like figure at the edge of her vision. Her heart raced, and when she blinked, it vanished. This encounter marked a turning point, driving Emily to research the house and its previous inhabitants. She learned the house was built by Jonathan for Abigail, intended as a symbol of eternal love. As she uncovered their story, the hauntings intensified. Objects moved on their own, doors opened and closed without cause, and the ghostly whispers became louder. Emily's dreams were haunted by visions of the lovers, both joyful and despairing. These visions left her exhausted, but more determined to uncover the truth. Her search led her to an old sailor's journal at the Salem Maritime Museum, which mentioned Jonathan's ship and its doomed voyage. The ship, and with it Jonathan's promise of return, had been lost at sea. In the growing hauntings, Emily discovered a note from Abigail in the margin of a letter. It spoke of a final, unsent declaration of love and her resolve to join Jonathan in death if he did not return. Emily realized she was not just uncovering a tragic love story, she was unraveling a deep, unresolved longing embedded in the house's very walls. As winter approached, Emily's quest became more urgent. The hauntings grew tangible, the once comforting solitude now oppressive with a century-old grief. She knew she had to find the final letter, hoping to bring closure to Abigail and Jonathan, and quiet the restless spirits in her home. The chill of winter began to grip Salem, and with it, the haunting within Emily's Victorian home intensified. The spectral occurrences, 
once fleeting and subtle, now became a constant, unnerving presence. Emily, determined and more connected to the house's history, found herself increasingly drawn into the realm of Abigail's unrequited love and eternal weight. One night, as Emily scoured through more letters in the attic, her world and Abigail's seemed to merge. The air turned cold and a faint sound of weeping echoed through the halls. In the shadows, the silhouette of a forlorn figure watched her, its presence both eerie and melancholic. Driven by a mix of fear and fascination, Emily's research into the house's past deepened. She visited the local historical society, where she uncovered more about Jonathan's life and his undying love for Abigail. The house, she learned, was their dream, a haven from Jonathan's tumultuous sea life. Yet, the more she discovered, the more intense the hauntings grew. Objects would mysteriously relocate, doors creaked open of their own accord, and Emily often felt a chilling presence behind her, accompanied by whispers that seemed to be calling out to her. Her dreams were now vivid portrayals of Abigail and Jonathan's life. Scenes of joyous reunions and painful farewells. Each morning, Emily awoke feeling an emotional resonance with Abigail's plight, understanding her longing and despair. A breakthrough came when Emily located an old lighthouse keeper's log. It detailed a fierce storm and the tragic loss of Jonathan's ship. The realization that Jonathan never returned, leaving Abigail in perpetual wait, struck Emily profoundly. She felt an overwhelming empathy her own experiences of loss resonating with Abigail's unending grief. In a hidden compartment in the attic, Emily found what she was looking for, the final unsent letter from Abigail to Jonathan. It was a farewell filled with love and despair. As Emily read, the atmosphere shifted palpable, the temperature plummeted, and a ghostly light flickered into being. There, before her stood Abigail, a spectral figure whose eyes were deep pools of sorrow. Despite her fear, Emily felt a surge of empathy for the spirit. Abigail's presence was profound, her silent gaze conveying a story of love that transcended time. Emily realized that the hauntings were expressions of Abigail's unresolved grief her inability to let go of her lost love. Convinced she had to help Abigail find peace, Emily delved deeper into Jonathan's fate. Her search brought her to the harsh truth. Jonathan had perished at sea, his promise to return unfulfilled. Emily knew she had to convey this truth to Abigail's spirit, hoping it might release her from her earthly bonds. Yet even after sharing Jonathan's fate with Abigail's spirit, the hauntings persisted, though less malevolent. Emily sensed that Abigail's spirit required something more to be freed, an act of closure that Emily herself was still understanding. In this quest for resolution, Emily uncovered a startling truth about her own connection to the house. Genealogical research revealed that she was a descendant of Jonathan. This revelation explained her strong draw to the house and Abigail's spirit's connection to her. Emily was the living link to a past that refused to be forgotten, a bridge between eras. As winter's grip tightened, Emily knew she faced the most critical part of her journey. She needed to complete Abigail's unfinished business, to deliver the unsent letter to Jonathan, and perhaps in doing so, unite their spirits in a way life had denied them. With resolve and a heavy heart, Emily planned a symbolic act, a pilgrimage to the sea cliffs where Jonathan's ship had met its tragic end. The heart of winter enveloped Salem, and with it came a deepening of the mystery in Emily Carson's life. As she prepared for her crucial journey, the haunting within her home reached a crescendo. The Victorian house, once a symbol of architectural elegance, now resonated with the echoes of a centuries-old love story. Emily felt the weight of her responsibility not just as a caretaker of the house, but as a descendant of Jonathan, a revelation that had profoundly changed her perception of her role in this unfolding drama. She understood that her connection to Abigail and Jonathan was more than mere coincidence. It was a legacy that she was meant to honor and resolve. 
As she planned her pilgrimage to the sea cliffs, the manifestations in the house grew more poignant. The air would frequently turn cold, the sound of a distant sea shanty would drift through the halls, and the silhouette of a woman, presumed to be Abigail, appeared more frequently, her presence both sorrowful and expectant. Emily's research into Jonathan's life revealed a man of depth and passion, a soul torn between his love for Abigail and the call of the sea. This knowledge deepened Emily's empathy for both lovers, intertwining her own experience of loss and unfulfilled promises with theirs. The night of her journey to the cliffs arrived, a moonless evening where the stars seemed to be the only source of light in the vast darkness. Standing at the cliff's edge, the roar of the ocean below her, Emily felt an overwhelming sense of connection, not just to Abigail and Jonathan, but to the very essence of human longing and love. With the final letter in hand, Emily read Abigail's words aloud, her voice carrying over the winds. The letter spoke of undying love, of unbearable separation, and of a hope that transcended even death. As Emily's voice echoed into the night, a profound silence enveloped her. It was as if the sea itself was listening, acknowledging the pain and longing of decades past. In that moment of stillness, a soft light appeared on the horizon, a spectral beacon that seemed to emerge from the depths of the ocean. As Emily watched, the light took shape, forming the figure of a sailor, ethereal, yet unmistakably Jonathan. At the same time, the apparition of Abigail appeared beside Emily, her spectral eyes filled with a mix of sorrow and hope. The two spirits, Jonathan and Abigail, moved towards each other, their forms glowing in the moonlight. As they met, their silhouettes merged, forming an embrace that seemed to bridge the gap between life and death, past and present. It was a moment of profound beauty and sadness, a testament to the enduring power of love. With the union of the spirits, the haunting in Emily's home came to an end. She felt an immediate sense of release, as if a weight had been lifted not just from the house, but from her own heart. The spirits of Abigail and Jonathan, united at last, faded into the night, leaving behind a sense of peace that was almost palpable. This experience marked a turning point in Emily's life. She had come to Salem seeking solace for her own heartache and had found herself a key player in resolving a historical love story. This journey had not only brought peace to two restless spirits, but had also allowed her to confront and heal her own wounds. As the first light of dawn broke over the horizon, casting a soft glow on the Victorian house in Salem, Emily Carson stood at the cliff's edge the ocean's roar a solemn hymn to her profound act of closure. The night's events had left an indelible mark on her soul, a transformation that went beyond the mere resolution of a haunting. Returning to the house, Emily felt an overwhelming sense of peace. The once omnipresent chill had lifted, replaced by a warmth that seemed to emanate from the very walls. The shadows that had flickered with restless energy now lay still, and the air, once heavy with the scent of brine and grief, was now just air, fresh and clear. In the days that followed, Emily reflected on the journey she had undertaken. She had come to Salem seeking solace from her own heartache, only to find herself entwined in the resolution of a century-old tragedy. The discovery of her lineage, revealing her as a descendant of Jonathan, had added an even more personal dimension to her quest. This revelation not only explained her inexplicable draw to the house and its hidden history, but also illuminated a path of understanding her own heart. The experience had changed Emily. She no longer felt like a mere spectator of history, but rather an active participant. Her role in uniting Abigail and Jonathan had given her a deeper appreciation for the stories that lay hidden in the folds of time. She began to see her role as a history teacher in a new light, no longer just imparting dates and events, but also conveying the emotions and humanity that history encompassed. 
As winter turned to spring, Emily's life in Salem flourished. She found herself more engaged with her students, sharing with them not just the facts of history, but its mysteries and its capacity to touch lives across time. Her passion for teaching was reignited, fueled by her own experiences with the house and its former inhabitants. The house, too, seemed to undergo a transformation. With the spirits of Abigail and Jonathan at rest, it took on a new character. No longer a vessel for sorrow and longing, it felt like a home, warm and inviting. Emily took to renovating it, preserving its historical integrity while breathing new life into its rooms. Each brush stroke was a tribute to its past, each repair a nod to its future. Emily's personal life also saw a renewal. She found herself open to new relationships, her heart no longer weighed down by the ghosts of her past. She began to form deeper connections within the community, no longer the solitary figure who had first moved into the Victorian house. The story of Abigail and Jonathan and her role in it became a cherished part of her life, a reminder that love in all its forms transcends time and death. The Victorian house, once a place of haunting and mystery, had become a beacon of hope, a place where the past and present coexisted in harmony. Emily Carson, once just a history teacher, had become something more. She was a guardian of memories, a bridge between eras, and a testament to the enduring power of love and resolution. In the heart of Salem, in a house filled with history, she had found her true calling, her true home. Well, wasn't that a story to die for? It seems love can indeed be a haunting affair. Leave a comment below and tell us. Would you dare to open a letter from a ghostly admirer? Keep your eyes peeled for our next spine-tingling tale where some love stories never truly end. They just transform into love letters from the grave. Fright fans, click next for more chills and hit subscribe to join our ghastly gang. You see... Who dares to miss out, so watch our next video.